rise up remnant welcome to another ed talks daily episode today i'm going to be talking about staying centered and balanced staying centered and balanced it starts with a foundation of stability and when we have a foundation of stability it keeps us centered with the foundation of stability then we are able to stay balanced Unless you're centered, unless your brain, there are certain hormones in your brains that have to be in alignment in order for you to actually stay centered. By that I mean, a baby wobbles because of something happening. They're not having developed the part of their brain. Likewise, in the spirit, staying centered has to do with the same thing. And then centeredness has a lot to do with balance. So keep tapping into this episode of Ed Talks Daily as I talk about staying centered and balanced through the Holy Spirit. Let's get it. Shout out to everybody watching. Welcome to Ed Talks Daily. Ed Talks Daily is all about growth in all aspects of your life. How to solidify a holistic mindset that will lead to healthy body, healthy relationships, and internal spirit. If you want to join me on this journey to becoming the best version of ourselves, while the cat play with my thing, the Ed Talks Daily is for you. Find Ed Talks Daily on your favorite podcast app by going to edtalksdaily.com. And when you listen to it, make sure you leave a review so we can help spread this. That's just a way of saying thank you. So don't just think thank you, say thank you. And that's going to help the podcast grow and all that good stuff. So today I'm going to be talking about staying centered and balanced. When your life is centered around the peace that surpasses understanding, balance almost is a after effect of being centered around the spirit of God. You know, we often get balanced wrong and we talk about work-life balance. But once your life become part of your work, you really get the next balance. And a lot of times we're trying to allocate time for things and we call it balance. When balance is really not, is being able to stay on your two feet while navigating through all turbulences, problems, earthquakes hurricanes winds and storms so that means no matter how unstable your life is you have a stability that passes understanding while people might walk wibble wobble but you won't fall why because there's a balance that happens is no matter what shakes you you're not gonna fall because you are stable on the Word of God Somebody can comment that in the chat. I'm stable on the word of God. I'm stable on the promises of the Most High. I'm stable on because my life is centered around the source of peace. That's an affirmation right there. I'm stable because my life is centered around the source of peace. It doesn't mean that sometimes I don't get in my head. It doesn't mean that sometimes I don't overthink. It doesn't mean that sometimes I'm not stressing about the future. But I remember the promises of life of God and that always brings me back to the center. Remembering the promises of God will always bring you back to your center. So let's let's share some let's share some promises with you. Okay? We're gonna share to you what, what are some promises that God has said. What are some things He's said that we should remember? And when we remember these things, we're gonna be stable on the promises of God. So here's Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then it says, and it comes with a promise at the end. It says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So now we got to remember this one. This is a good one to write on your wall, to write on the, on the tablet of your heart. 
Because a lot of times we talk about the peace that surpasses understanding the peace of God. But the issue with it is we, we, we don't present our requests. We don't, we don't respond to situation by prayer and petition. We respond to it by overthinking and worry. And, and in this today, right now, I wanted you to say, I declare and decree that I am in my mind and my soul. Worry and fear will not be my first response to situations. Anxiety, worry, and fear are like brothers, sisters, and cousins. Okay? Because fear is, worry is, fe is when fear paint mental pictures in your mind. Anxiety is when you live out those pictures of that fear being painted in your mind. Okay? So, when you let fear tell you about your future and not God remind you of your future, you're going to keep worrying. So anxiety, fear, worry, walk together. So the first thing we're going to say is in every situation that I go through, I'm growing through it. I'm going to respond to it with prayer, petition, thanksgiving, and by presenting a request to God. If you're enjoying this video, like the video and share it. Press the like button right now. Take a pause. If you're watching on YouTube, press the like button right now. Help this. Like the video and share it. Like the video and share it. Once again, like the video and share it. So it says, you don't want to be anxious about anything. It says, in every situation, prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So when we think we're going through something, we need to not only pray, but petition, but bring our request, but also be thankful. And then we go to God and say, this is what I need right now, Father God. I'm actually struggling with this, casting your anxieties into the Lord. Is that making sense? Let's say that right now. I am casting my anxieties to God because if I hold them in, they're making me sick. Like this video and share it. Like this video and share it. I am casting my anxieties into God because if I hold them in, they're going to make me s s sick. So there's a former before the latter. It doesn't say in some situation, prayer and petition with thanksgiving. It says in every situation. That means no matter what you're going through, the first thing you should do is make sure you go to God. That's how the peace of God transcends all understanding and guards your hearts and your minds. Your hearts and minds must be guided by Christ Jesus. So when I'm telling you that in, in, in this, we must think about it. So now here's what it says. It says, do not worry about tomorrow. Remember I said anxiety, worry, fear, walk together. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let me tell you something. You're going to experience whatever is going to come, so why experience it before it comes, if it even comes? You're going to experience whatever is on the way. Why experience it before it comes, if it even comes? Which means sometimes we're experiencing now what we think is going to happen that may never happen. And why are you in your head about it? You're foregoing thanksgiving. Give thanks. I need you to count your blessings today. There's a stability that comes for, from looking at what is keeping you grounded, that your needs are met. The groundedness is that I have, I'm standing on my two feet because no matter what's happening, I am still have a roof over my head. Okay. No matter what's happening, some of you still have your health to some extent. And somebody says, my health is not that good. But let me tell you something. If you have your life, that means you still have a health of life, which means your health can improve. And even the doctors say, there's no hope for you. God says there is hope. Because then 1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now, I know if I was just talking about staying grounded in what you do then you might say i don't know about that but we're talking about being grounded on the foundation called the source abba i mean that's a different groundedness let's let's talk about grounding stuff now when we think about grounding we think about walking around barefoot on the earth post electromagnetic field helping us connect to the ground and helping you stay healthy another form of grounding is electricity when you have to ground the line into the ground to make sure there's a stability of energy flow. We, we don't just ground to the earth. We ground to he who created the earth. That's why we're grounding in God. 
is a strength that you that surpasses understanding. So cast your cares on the Lord. Psalms 55 verse 22. And he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Remember what I told you about it? About being grounded. That the wind is moving. The storms are coming. But you're still like. You know that everything is going to work out somehow. This is what we're talking about. I need you to say to yourself. Every single thing is going to work out in my life. Even though it's not looking like it's going to work out. Like this video and share it. Comment something on this video while you're watching it. And if you sit listening, make sure you leave a review. So as you're thinking about this, you got to think like, yo, you know what? Storms have came, storms have passed. Finances have been good, finances have been bad. Emotions have came, emotions have left. Frustrations have been here, frustrations have left. Sickness has came and sickness has passed. Yet the word of the Lord endures forever. What am I going to look at? The situations or circumstances that flee? Or God that stands still and doesn't get moved by time, no situations. This is why we got to focus on God. This is what's going to bring us this. This is why this is the theme of today. Because anything that we put our hopes in can be wavered by circumstances. The economy can be wavered by circumstances. People will be wavered by emotions. But God is a still God. And that's why the word says, be still and know that I am God. He doesn't, he doesn't get moved by situation. These things will surely pass. He says, this too shall pass because I am. So there's going to be a stability that leads to balance. So there's going to be a stability in the foundation of Christ that leads to a balance in your life where you're not pulled by things, by storms, by situations, by life circumstances. But what you're doing is you're grounded in the promises of God. You write those things on the scroll of your heart. And no matter what, if it looks like it's going to break me, I know that God's going to use it for my good. You have a different mindset where the, world, where the word is applied in your mind. And it allows you to get out of overthinking thoughts. So somebody says, what's the scientific way to get out of overthinking? When you have you when when you finally say I don't just say I I hear the promises of God but I actually believe what God said overthinking I believe what God said Some of you may may not understand how that's an antidote to overthinking you're still trying to figure out well maybe I need to no 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 I need you to believe what God said Believe what God said about you Believe what God said about your future. Believe what God said about every single aspect of your life. How can you overthink if you believe what God said? When you believe what God says and you believe what he said, you have a stability. Even though your your things are moving crazily, it's like there's a faith that others don't understand. And that's what I want to get to you today. Right? We're going to a foundation of a thing that's more empowering than any other thing you can do. So somebody would be like, man, I thought I could get stability and balance by having good time management skills. Absolutely. I can get stability and balance um, by breathing and doing this. I can have stability and balance by having good um, found, um, boundaries. I can get stability. I'm saying, yeah, I'm sure all those things are part of it. But what I'm saying is there's a stability and balance that comes from believing what God said. Man, y'all hearing? Y'all hear, man? We're talking faith talk. I mean, we're talking a different foundation of peace. All right, let's keep going. So Isaiah 41 says, verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will help hold you with my righteous right hand. Do you believe that? You see what I'm saying? When you believe things like that, I don't know. It, 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 
when you're in your midst of your calamity, that keeps you stable. You in your prison, you in your jail cell, you in your lion's den, you in your fire, you're in your persecution, you're in your court case, you're in your breakup, you're in your divorce, you're in your traumatic situation, you're in an, your abusive situation. You say, and, and you remember this promise and you believe it, and somehow a peace that surpasses understanding covers you. You are in the middle of cancer. You in the middle of the worst situation you possibly can be enduring right now. And somehow the promises of God has reminded you and you, and you believed it and you trust it. I'm telling you, that's going to take you to another level of peace. Then the word says, John 14, verse 27. It says, peace I leave with you. My, I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and not be afraid. Look, a healthy fear of the Lord diminishes your fear of the world. A healthy fear of the word helps you have no fear of the world. Because you remember the peace that he left with you. The peace that he gave to you. The peace that he gave you that's not as the world gives. Therefore, your hearts are not troubled and you're not afraid. Okay? Okay. When we start having that sort of groundedness in the very word of God, when we're grounded in the promises of the Lord, we will not be wavered by circumstances, situation, but we will be balanced knowing that every single thing in your life is going to be working for your good because you trust in the Lord. Can everybody hear me? If you're watching and enjoying this video, like this video and share it. Like this video and share it and comment something in the comment section. So let, let me leave you with this. It says, Psalms 23, verse 1 to 4. Remember, the good Lord is your shepherd. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Do you believe the promises or do you just read them? He says, he leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. It says, he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. God want to make sure that his promises reign true. So for his name's sake and his righteous name, he's not going to say something and not do it. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me because you are with me. You hear what I'm saying? You, you see how fear gets eradicated by the presence of God? You see how there's the stability that no matter what you're going through, that you're going to be able to go over it. If you just trust in what you can do, what happens when your strength runs out? If you just trust in what you practice, what happens when you don't have the strength and courage to practice them? If you just have trust in what you eat, what happens when, you, when the food is not working anymore? If you just trust in other mere mortals, what happens when they leave you? If you just put your trust in your knowledge, what happens when your knowledge fails you? If you put your trust in your own strength, what happens when you get weak? But when you put your trust in God, he says, he will be your strength in the midst of your weakness. This creates a stability of knowing that the Lord will never forsake.